Okay, everybody, I'm going to be talking about the uh, source window this episode. Last episode, I talked about the project window. Now we're going to do source, then we'll do timeline and program. For this window here, I want to talk about some of the basic views here. First of all, you got a time code right here. I'm going to bring some footage in. Okay, I've got some DSLR footage down here. And one way you just quickly bring footage from your project window into your source window is you can drag it like this, or you can simply double click on it. Okay, in this window here, now that I've got some clips loaded, I want to show you just some quick items. First of all, let's talk about playback here. To playback video footage, all you're going to have to do, first of all, is just play, press your spacebar while you're in your source window. Press play, or press your spacebar once to play. Press it again, we'll pause. This is your playhead right here. This will display what frame you're on. Before I get into frames, let's talk about this right here. This is time code. So uh, your source window is basically an editor. It's, a, it's an editor where you're going to be choosing what portion of the shot you want to drop down into your timeline. So right now I've got this full clip here, and there's a portion of this footage that I'm not going to be using. We're going to get into editing in a little bit. But this time code right here, uh, what this represents, your time code is going to be, uh, first of all, the first two numbers here will be hours, your hour slate. And this is kind of just like a, a, an arbitrary um, time code that has been chosen by the camera here, depending on people on cameras can choose the, the hour they want to start with. So they have so every um, clip that they have, usually what, why they will start this at like 20 or something different is because oftentimes they will use the hour number to represent the real number or the or, or the, the what's called the roll number or the real number of the uh, card that you're working on. If it's a first card, you might put zero one as the hour on the camera, or zero two, or zero three, and so on. So this kind of means this could be the twentieth um, real number right here. But they're using the hours to designate that real number. That's just one reason they could they would use that. Right here, you've got minutes, and here you've got seconds, and here you've got frames. So if this is running at twenty four frames per second, it's going to get up to twenty three. And then the next one's going to reset for the 24th frame, and then this will update to the next second. And this will get up to 59 and update to the next minute, and then so on to the hours. And uh, so this is very important because as you edit, it's editing based on time code. It's doing what's called an editing decision list based on time code, code of a named clip. So the, if the footage goes offline, it uses this time code to maintain the edit and can reconnect to footage later on based on time code. This is something new they've added for 2015. This is uh, this shows if you're getting frames dropped, if your system is too slow to play back the footage real time, this will change colors to kind of a reddish color instead of this kind of greenish yellow color here, this greenish color that shows um, that you are getting full time playback. And you'll see this on like red footage and other footage that can't play back. And if this is keeps popping up, you might want to go over to this little drop down here and tell it to change the resolution of your footage playing back. Right now, uh, I'm going. This, since this is a DSLR, my system is plenty fast. I'm going to change this little drop-down window to full. If you're playing something like 4K or 5K footage off of Red, or 4K fo footage off of a Sony or something else, you can tell this to play back a quarter the resolution, and it will play back a lot faster on the system that you have. This option right here, this little pull down helps you to zoom up on the image if you need. This is hardly ever used in the source monitor because compositing very is not really done in the source monitor. But you can click on this and zoom in and out and look at the entire image here, about 10%, where you can zoom in and look at it closely as well. Uh, if you've zoomed in here and you want to navigate through this window here, you can use these bars to kind of find a certain portion of the image. Or you can use your hand tool down here on your toolbar, click on that, or hit H for your shortcut, and you can grab this image. I'm clicking and dragging and moving this image around to see what portion of the image I want to see. Go back to my arrow. I'm going to make this fit here so it fits so I see the entire image. Over here on the right, as we move along here, this is the settings for the source window here. As you click on this item right here, it'll bring up a little menu. Uh, if you're doing compositing, once again, this is fairly uh, unused in the source window. And you do have an alpha view if you're doing compositing. Right now there's no alpha channel, show, so it's showing all white. The alpha channel would show in black. And uh, so I'm going to turn that back to composite video, which is just a regular video. You do have an audio waveform, so if there's audio that belongs to the video, you can look at the audio waveform that belongs to that video clip right there. If you're editing audio off this, you can actually just grab audio off of this and drag it into your timeline as well. So I'm going to tell this to go back to composite video. A few other things that you have on this little setting item here is a playback resolution, which we showed right here. You can pull that down to 
recorder. You, you don't even have to access it on your little settings here. You can do it right here on the drop down menu. Your playback resolution and your pause resolution. Pause resolution by default stays on full. It's usually the system can process these things in about a half a second, these full quality images. Uh, so you can see what it looks like full quality. Loop. If you have that check mark, it'll get to the, when it gets to the end playing, it'll go back to the beginning and play again. And some other things here we're going to cover in future episodes, uh, things like safe margin, transparency grid, and time ruler numbers uh, that will show up here. If we check mark one of those safe margins, it's going to show the safe margins for title safe and, and action safe. We'll get into those later and describe those. I'm going to take that off for right now. And you, like I said, usually you're not seeing this in the source monitor. This is something that you will more a access more in the program monitor. Another thing you have down here, which we will cover more in detail on the on the program monitor, is going to be overlays and overlay settings. Overlay is going to display things like uh, time code. If you go in here and hit settings under the overlay settings, you can tell what to display when the overlay settings are turned on or off. You'll be able to show multicam sources. You'll be able to show 4x3 save margin if you're broadcasting to regular uh, cathode ray tube television, which is pretty antiquated. Um, things like time code, you can tell it to show all the tracks of audio belonging to that. There's a whole bunch of things you can go in here and experiment with that will display when you turn on this little feature right here. When you go down and check mark overlays, right now time code is really the only thing on by default. You can reposition the time code, tell it where to show. Right now the time code burn is just showing in there what time code we're on exactly. I'm going to turn that off right now. Right here this little part here is the duration of either your entire clip if you don't have in and out points or it's the duration of your in and out points. If you're editing and you find a portion of the clip you want to keep, you move this along here. I'm going to grab the playhead, find a portion where I want this clip to start. Let's say I want to start right when she puts her foot up there. I'm going to put I for endpoint. I is the shortcut to put an endpoint right there. Now as we move along and let's say she moves her foot around the rope and stops. Right there, we put an out point. That's the entire clip that I want to use right there. Our new duration is 3 seconds and 21 frames. So that shows the duration of the clip that you're planning on laying down into your timeline. Let's show these features down here on the bottom. Uh, first of all, this is, well, I'm going to clear my in and out points, by the way. You can either right click and go to clear in and out, and that will do it. Or let me undo com Command Z. I'm back on my Mac, by the way. My video card's not acting up as much, so I'll probably, probably be alternating between the Mac and PC in future episodes because I think it's good to show both systems. So we've got our in point and out point. Another way is shortcut on a Mac is going to be Option X. We'll clear your in and out points. On a PC, it's Control Shift X. It's two of the, that's that one command that is uh, fairly different from uh, the two platforms. Most of the commands are pretty similar, but that's one that's pretty different. Command uh, Option X on a Mac, Control Shift X on a PC will clear your in and out points. Down here, you've got markers. If you And M is the shortcut for markers. You can click it on these. These I hardly ever use because I just use the shortcuts for them, but let's describe what they do. M is marker, or this little button here. Wherever you are positioned on your uh, playhead here, uh, actually, before we get into these, let me describe how to navigate with your playhead a little bit. First of all, we mentioned spacebar, play, and spacebar, pause. Now, if you want to rewind, stop, or forward, the three keys that professional editors will oftentimes use are JKL, the JKL keys. If you put three of your fingers on the JKL keys ready to go, uh, you can hit J for rewind, K for stop, L for forward, and that'll do it at 100%. If you hit J a bunch of times, like let's say, tw let's get this to the toward the end of the clip here. I'm going to grab my playhead, move it over, over. Hit J, it goes 100%. J again, 150. J again, 200, and so on. And it will keep doing that until it maxes out its speed. I can't remember if it's like 400%, but it gets going pretty fast. L is forward. So if you're looking for a certain part of your image, you can go L, L again, L again. And see, I'm going to find that part where she wraps her leg around the rope. So, so let's get to the beginning. If you want to go to the beginning, by the way, home takes you to the beginning of the clip, clip and end takes you to the end of the clip. So home is to the beginning, end takes you to the end of the clip. I'm going to go to home. I'm going to have my fingers on JKL. I'm going to hit L for forward. And I'm going to hit it. Again. Actually, I'm going to hit it twice or three times, and it's going to go pretty fast. I'm going to get my finger ready on K and get ready to stop where she wraps her finger around the rope. So let's go to the beginning, L, a couple of times. Stop. There it was. I saw her leg wrap around. J to rewind. K to stop. And then now, so JKL uh, works for rewind, stop, and forward. But if you hit J and L a bunch of times, it's going to uh, go faster and faster and faster. 
kind of once you get used to that, it's really nice to be able to scrub through clips and stop, rewind, stop using JKL. Now, if you want to fine tune where you're landing, you can do it frame by frame. Your arrows up and down and left and right have different functions. First of all, your arrows left and right go through one frame at a time. You'll notice the time code here changing as I do arrow right one frame at a time and you'll see the picture advancing and my playhead advancing and arrow left goes back one frame at a time. Now if you hold down shift and do arrows left or right it will jump 10 frames at a time forward or arrow left 10 frames at a time backwards. So kind of quick way of navigating here. So if you're trying to find something watch this. I'm going to home to go to the beginning L L L K to stop, there was a leg wrap around, J to rewind, K to stop, and now I can use my arrow. Say I want it to start or stop. Let's say I want to put an endpoint right where her foot touches a rock. Arrow right, one, two, three. It's going too slow, so I'm going to do shift, arrow right, arrow right. That went too far, so now I'm going to do arrow back a couple times. Right there. Got it exactly where I needed to on the frame that I need. Frame uh, editing is about being able to edit to the frame. Uh, now I can do I for endpoint if I want to start there. So I'm going to undo that. But those are the basic functions there. By the way, um, arrows up and down will land on very specific points, uh, whatever point it has a stop on. Right now the only beginning and ending stops are the actual beginning of the clip and the end. There's nothing in between. If I set an endpoint, I, set an out point, O, I'm going to go to home, hit home, so I'm at the beginning. Now watch this, arrow down will land on the next point, the end point. Arrow down again, lands on the next point. Arrow down again, lands on the next point, which is the end. Arrow up goes backwards and does the exact same thing landing on those points. So if you need to navigate quickly, that's one way of navigating quickly. And there you go. That's JKL, arrows up and down, arrows at left and right, including the shift option as well, adding 10, 10 frames at a time. So I'm going to clear this, option X. Let's show these other features down here. So first of all, marker. What a marker is, is as you move along, if you want to find, if you want to add little notes to your video, you can do that at specific points. Say I want to add, put a little point where she puts her foot down. Uh, if I'm like a producer giving notes to the editor, I can say, I want to start this picture here. So I'm going to put M for marker or push this button and it adds this marker right there. You can add as many markers as you want. Now you can simply double click on that marker. It brings up this window and you can say, start the edit here and you can put notes in there or you can put the name of the marker um, you can do a bunch of different things you can change the colors you can do a whole bunch of different stuff here to add notes to the editor here hit OK and now that's there let's add another one over here and I'm going to put another marker there and say change the color of the rock there we go or I can just name it like the rock and then put the comments down here if I wish. I'll hit OK. Now as an editor opens this up, you'll be able to see these markers and go, oh, there's a note here. Double click on it. Brings up that and says start the edit here. OK. And then I've got this other one. Uh, change the color of the rock. OK. That's Thanks for being a bossy boss and telling me to do those things. There we go. OK. These little items here. This is mark in, mark out. Uh, actually, I'm going to get rid of my markers. I'm going to right click and say clear all markers right now. So, okay, but we showed you how to get this where you want to. You can put an endpoint with this mark in, out point with the mark out. This is the same as the shortcuts I and O. Shortcut to jump to your endpoint is going to be Shift I. Shortcut for jumping to your out point is Shift O. You can click on these buttons and it will do it, or you can use the shortcuts on your keyboard Shift I, Shift O. For your in and out point. These are your play. This is how you play it and stop. Never use this because I use my spacebar or K, JKL. Uh, step back one frame, jump forward one frame. Those are just your right and left arrow keys, so you pretty much never have to use these buttons here. This is for editing here. Insert and overwrite. Let's talk about these really quick. We'll get into more detail as we start getting into the editing. Uh, modules, but I'm going to add a clip to my timeline here and generate a timeline. That's actually the same clip as what when I have in the window, so I'm going to grab a different one, stick in there. Okay, I've got a clip in my timeline here, and what I've got here 
is we've got insert and override. Let me show you what these two features do. And like I said, we'll get into more details later. Insert, basically, it's going to put the clip into the timeline. It's a shortcut that'll put the clip into the timeline exactly where the playhead, right on the frame where the playhead is. But what it's going to do, insert, watch this as I click it, it's going to put a cut in that video and push everything else and put it all push it all out. Now an overwrite, what an overwrite does is you click, it'll just put it in there right where the playhead is, cut into it, but eat into the video for the length of my video here. So it just cut into this video instead of shoving it out. So watch this again. Insert, now I'm going to use shortcuts, which is comma and period. Comma, inserts and shoves it out, cuts it and shoves it out. Undo, period, watch this. It just eats into the video and cuts into it. This up here is to export a still image. Of your, if you need to send a still image of something to a producer or to a friend or something like that, you can just get it on the frame you want to export. Get down here and hit this little export frame. The shortcut is Shift E to export out of the source window. You click. It'll ask you what format do you want to export it out to. It'll have you name it right here. And it'll have you choose a path where to save your picture. So you choose a path, you choose the JPEG, choose the uh, name of the image, and hit OK, and it'll import the JPEG back into your project if you wish, whenever you have, have that check marked. And that's how to export a still frame, and it will export it out as, a, as the same resolution of your image right here, which is 1920 by 1080 right now. This is a button editor right here. If you click on this, it'll bring up you. It's these buttons down here that you can add. You can go through and see if there's any other buttons that you want, like a closed caption item or a loop item or a play around. Play around is kind of a handy uh, function, but I usually use that in the timeline. I just use the shortcut. We'll show that later as we get into the timeline. Uh, so you can add these buttons if you wish. You can grab them and drag them down and position them where you want to if there's some buttons missing that you like. And then you hit OK. And also, if there's something you put in there that you don't like, you can hit Reset Layout, and it will turn it back to the default. Now, this here, this little bar here, is a zoom in and out tool. This basically zooms into your little timeline area right here. So if you need to do something frame by frame, and each little click represents a frame. Watch this as I arrow right. It jumps from frame to frame. If you really want to see what frame you're on, you can zoom way in, and there you go. And if not, you can grab this and zoom it all the way out. And you can actually uh, do this as well by doing your shortcuts on your top keyboard. Plus and minus. Plus will zoom in. Minus will zoom out. Okay. Now you've also got this item right here. This video has audio that belongs to it. If you want to bring the whole video down into your timeline, you can just simply... I, we showed you the shortcut with insert and overwrite. But you can also grab it like this. I'm clicking and dragging, and you can drag it down into your timeline. That's one way of doing that. Now you've got these two little icons right down here. If you use this one here, it's only going to grab the video from this clip. If you grab this, it will grab the audio. So watch this as I grab this and drag it down. It just brings down my video. As I grab this one and bring it down, it brings down just my audio. Other little things that kind of share the source monitor area here are effect controls to affect clips down in your timeline, which we'll get into, an audio mixer for audio clips down in your timeline as well, and the metadata. Any clip that you select down in your timeline or down in your project window will show the metadata of that clip. It'll show the clip name, it will show the frame rate, show the, the time code, show all the basic metadata that can also be entered in by an assistant editor as well, and we will get into that in a future episode. So those are the basics of the source monitor. The next episode, we're going to concentrate on the timeline or sequence.